Hey buns, so if you are new to Final Fantasy XIV, you might be drowning in blue unlock quests and the game doesn't tell you which ones are really important and which ones you could easily put off till later. So today we're gonna go through level by level using this FXV Gamer Escape article as a reference. And this link to this article will be in the description box down below. I'm gonna just tell you which ones that if I were you, which ones I would do now as I was leveling, what I would put off, what I think you might be actively screwing up your playthrough by not unlocking. Remember, many blue unlock quests are gated behind main story progression. So if you're at the right level for something, but you don't see it, check your main story quest level because you need not only your character to be the right level, but your main story quest needs to be at that level or, or at least maybe beyond it. I will not mention things that you automatically unlock just from doing the main story quest or your class and job quest because that is your top priority and uh, I'm just going to assume that you are doing that stuff first and getting all the unlocks that you get naturally just from going through the story, doing your class and job quests. For side features that I choose to skip, I'll explain at the end of each expansion's section why I consider those features optional and why I think it's fine to just put them off until your max level or whenever you feel like it. That does include all of the crafting and gathering content because I mean, you can always <laughs> get your hand jobs later. Again, please refer back to this FXV Gamer Escape article for the quest unlock info. The purpose of this video today is not to just give you all of the all of the information about all the quests and stuff because that's here on Gamer Escape. I'm here to show you which quests are important and which ones you can put off till later. At level 10, you can unlock the other classes that you had seen at character creation. That does include Rogue, which turns into Ninja later, so I guess it's easy to miss. Level 15, the challenge log is super important. Do not miss this because not unlocking it is like flushing XP down the toilet. Like it is a weekly log that gives you big, big XP just for doing stuff you'd probably do anyway, like doing dungeons, giving commendations to other players, things like that. At level 15, you can also unlock glamours, dyes, and the esthetician. Obviously these are not required, but it's stuff that I would personally consider to be urgent. And uh, the NPC who does the dye and glamour unlocks is right next to the Waking Sands, where you're gonna be returning anyway uh, a lot. So, I mean, it's on the way. Though no, frankly, nobody needs a good glamour more than she does, <laughs> like this outfit. And the esthetician is, of course, the barber to change your hair's cut. <laughs> if you have a hair. Level 17, retainer access. Super important because this is your bank and it is the way you put things up for sale on the market board for other players to buy. Uh, though if you are on the free trial, you cannot hire a retainer. Also at level 17, the retainer ventures. These are little missions you can send your retainers out on to get them to level up. It can take a while for them to level up, so might as well get started on that. Palace of the Dead. Now, this is the deep dungeon that people often go to to level alt jobs in, especially under level 40. Um, your first goal here will be getting through the first 50 floors. There's a story that goes along with it, and I suggest grabbing like three friends for it. You can... Also solo it, but it's not for the faint of heart. I will drop a link in the description box down below to a guide that I always use for Palace of the Dead. Um, but once you've cleared the first 50 floors, you will then be able to queue for floors 51 through 60 at the NPC with a matched party. And that's usually what people spam to level alt jobs. At level 20, you get your first mount. Finally, this is right after you pick your grand company through the main story quest and the Company seals that you need to buy your Chocobo issuance quest item to get the mount will be given to you by I think the next main story quest. You really don't want to forget this unlock because if you do, you'll be out of cluck. <laughs> At level 29, there is a quest that will allow you to go out the back gate of Gridania. So, I mean, it takes five seconds, might as well do it. It is Final Fantasy, so you have to throw wide the gate. You'll get it later. At level 30, you can and should unlock PvP, but you cannot PvP if you are on the free trial. That said, PvP gives a really good XP, especially the daily frontline roulette. Uh, but I would say go to the Wolf's Den first and set up your bars before you queue in because you'll be in for a rude surprise when you queue into the match and your bars are completely borked and unrecognizable. It'll be like a PV. UI, rather. Quick shout out to the PvP Revival Discord, by the way, if you're wanting to do more PvP, they have plenty of events happening all the time. At level 30, you also unlock cockfighting. 
I mean, yeah, you get your chocobo to fight alongside you. And I mean, depending on how bad you are at the game, it could be really, really helpful. Like I definitely needed it a lot while I'm leveling Paladin. Level 35, the Sunken Temple of Karn Dungeon Access, and you can't pass that up. I will typically recommend that you unlock these side dungeons that become available as you are leveling because they are there to help you with XP. Level 38, Cutter's Cry Dungeon Access. Level 44, Demo Darkhold Dungeon Access. There's two ways to unlock it, either from Fart of Fear or Shadows Uncast. Level 47, the Arum Veil Dungeon, which the Final Fantasy XIV official Twitter says is a great dungeon. And they wouldn't lie to you. At level 47, you also unlock the Adventurer Squadrons. I love this feature because these are a team of AI bots that will pretty much carry you through Realm Reborn dungeons. And you can level them up so they become very strong and they don't care if you just sit on your butt and do nothing while they do all the hard work of clearing the dungeon for you. But do not take them through hard mode dungeons. Don't do that. Uh, you do need second lieutenant rank in your grand company to unlock the Adventure Squadron. So I'll put a link in the description box down below that explains how to rank up in your grand company if you don't know. Level 50. So first off at level 50, know that if you own the Stormblood expansion, you can already go and unlock Samurai and Red Mage. And also I would suggest unlocking the Hunt at your grand company because uh, well, it's a big game feature. <laughs> Keep in mind that Realm Reborn Hunt Mark Bills do not grant XP, but starting in Heaven's Ward and beyond, you will get XP for the Hunt Mark Bills, but you need to have unlocked the Realm Reborn Hunts before you can unlock the future expansion hunts, okay? At level 50, you may notice that there is a buttload of side content now unlockable. This is um, can be very stressful, but just know that you can safely skip most of it for now. All you actually need is the hard mode versions of Ifrit, Titan, and Garuda Trials, so Earth, Wind, and Fire, and you also need the Crystal Tower Raid series in its entirety. Do that, and you are good to go straight on to Heaven's Ward. I will show on the screen for a minute though, all of the side dungeons, trials, and raids that are able to be unlocked by level 50. So it's just a bit easier to make sense of all of it. And like I said, you can do all this whenever, so don't be overwhelmed by this list. But I personally would recommend um, Lost City of Amdapur Dungeon and Tamtara Hard Dungeon. I really love those. Uh, also, do not do the trial Earth's Fount or any extreme trials in the duty finder. Use party finder for that. And also do not attempt the binding coils of Bahamut in the duty finder. It is extremely hard if you like, I don't think you'll even get a cue for it. It is worth doing binding coils unsynced with some friends maybe just so you can see the cutscenes because it's a very important story. And one more thing that is definitely optional but it would be a crime for me to not tell you to at least get started on is the Hildebrand quest. I mean, not quite mandatory, but worth, worth doing. They're fun. Now, before I actually move on to the Heaven's Ward section, I want to go over some of the features that I skipped on our way up to level 50 and why. If you don't care, feel free to just go on, use the video chapters and skip to the next section. So the level 10 Guild Hest Unlock. Now, I skipped this because the buff to Realm Reborn XP makes these alternate sources of XP less important than they may have once been. Also how good a guild has to XP is, is super conditional. Like it is great for the first time completion bonus if you're around the same level of the guild has. Beyond that, it's kind of crap XP. And so maybe for alt jobs, but then you actually need to unlock leave quests first before you can unlock guild has. And leaf quests are another thing I skipped because while they're great for leveling crafters and gatherers, the XP is not super good for battle jobs and now again, not super necessary with a buff to main story XP gain. So it's all a bit of a hassle. And while maybe I would unlock guild has for all jobs, I'm not gonna tell people it's a rush to get that done. All the housing area unlocks I'm skipping because they're really unnecessary and buying a house is expensive, time consuming and tedious. Emotes and minions, obviously not urgent. Level 15, gold saucer unlock. This is just a side content mini game area. Fun, but again, um, not urgent. I guess it does kind of fall similarly in the category of Hildebrand, but I, don't, I didn't want to get carried away with like, oh, this is fun, so you should do it. We're trying to keep this as concise as possible. Uh, 
All materia unlock quests. Materia is not important at low levels. Sightseeing log, optional, but doesn't give XP or anything. Treasure hunting, fun, but not urgent. Definitely can do that later. Robberborn Beast Tribes, that's the Sylphs, the Sahagan, and the Amalja Beast Tribes. Also Ixal, but that's crafting, so skipping that. I skipped those because the XP for these Beast Tribes is not very good, and the quests might be easier after you get flying in Realm Reborn. Anyway, the Realm Reborn Relic is just for Glamour, and it is a highly tedious process that is best done at max level. I also skipped over the Blue Mage job that you can unlock when you're level 50 as long as you finish the ultimate weapon main story quest. That's because Blue Mage is entirely side content and not a real job. Heaven's Ward. So at level 50, when the main story takes you to the Heaven's Ward city, you can then unlock the Heaven's Ward jobs, Astrologian, Machinist, and Dark Knight. Then at level 51, there's a new dungeon, side dungeon, the Dusk Vigil. Also at level 51, you can unlock flying in the Curthus Western Highlands Heaven's Ward zone, though unlike in Realm Reborn, where you got flying just from doing the main story quest, from now on, you will now need to get ether currents to unlock flying in a zone. Each zone has 15 ether currents that you need. One comes from the main story quest, four come from blue unlock quests in the zone, sometimes like a peripheral zone to it, like a hub. And there are 10 ether currents you need to hunt down and click on to unlock flying in the zone. You can check your progress on this in the travel menu under ether currents anytime. And as a reminder, make sure that you are caught up through the appropriate level of your main story quest. So for Curthus Western, make sure you're caught up through level 51 of the main story. At level 53, you can unlock your daily hunts for Heaven's Ward. These are the ones that start giving you the extra daily XP if you do them. Level 53, Dravanian Forelands Flying. Yes, we want that. Level 55, Churning Miss Flying. Level 56, the rank 2 Heaven's Ward Hunts. Level 57, Sea of Clouds Flying. Yes, we want that. Level 59, we have two more zones we can get flying in, Dravanian Hinterlands and as a slaw. At level 60, you can unlock the elite weekly hunts for Heaven's Ward, and you can also unlock Wondrous Tales, which I strongly recommend. Doing it gives a ton of XP. If you own Shadowbringers, you can unlock a Dancer and Gunbreaker as soon as you reach level 60. And just like with Realm Reborn, when you hit level 60 and you finish your Heaven's Ward story, you're gonna be flooded with a ton of blue unlock quests yet again, but good news, you can safely ignore them and move right on to Stormblood. As before, I will show you a list of all the side dungeons, trials, and raids that you could unlock at 60, you know, at your leisure. Personally, I would suggest the Warring Triad. That's the three bosses with the containment bay names before moving on to Stormblood. It's not required, but it's pretty sweet. For dungeons, I love Lost City of Amdapur, so I also, of course, like the hard version. Side note, hard versions are not hard. I don't know why they're called that. It's just different. It's a different layout. I could also recommend Fractal Continuum because it has a really nice soundtrack. Like before with Realm Reborn, I'll now mention stuff that I skipped on our way to level 60. Heaven's Ward Beast Tribes XP rewards are still not the best, but they're cool. So I hope you will do these Beast Tribes later. That's the Vath, Vanu Vanu, and well, Moogle, but Moogles are crafters. The Heaven's Ward Relic Path. Now that's the Anima weapons. They are for glamour and really best done at max level. There's more Sightseeing Log, more Hildebrand, all optional stuff, and a Stone Sky C. That is for checking DPS, but you should not be worried about that while leveling. All right, Stormblood. So the first major unlock I would point out is a Stormblood One Star Hunts access. Then level 63, we have Two Star Hunts access. Have it on high, very similar to Palace of the Dead, only for level 61 plus. Here, people tend to spam floors 21 through 30 in a matched party for XP when leveling alt jobs. Level 64, flying in Yansha. Level 66, Azim Step flying. And level 66 is also the uh, three star hunt. You can upgrade your hunts there. Level 67, Fringe is flying. Yes, obviously, <laughs> need to fly. Level 69, the peaks flying. <laughs> yeah, you'll be flying over the peaks, all right. Never mind. So level 70 is the <laughs> flocks flying and Stormblood Elite hunts access. 
as before with reaching the level cap and finishing that expansion's story, you are once again faced with a plethora of unlocks for side dungeons, trials, and raids. But as before, you do not have to do any of this now. You are safe to move right along to Shadowbringers and you know, do the side stuff when you feel like it. But for me, what stands out here, if you're just looking for suggestions, is the Ivalis raid storyline. It's required for your Shadowbringers relic weapon if you plan on doing that. And maybe the Omega Raids, a normal mode, just for the story. Um, the writer for Shadowbringers, who's also doing the main writing for Endwalker, su suggested that you do Omega for Endwalker. So, I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. On our way to level 70, I skipped the housing unlock for Kugane, the residential district, because trying to get a house will sidetrack you massively. I would recommend actually waiting till Endwalker when the Ishgard housing district comes out, because I think that will make a lot of new housing plots available. The minion and emote unlocks are of course not urgent. The Stormblood Beast Tribe quests I skipped because they're still not giving great XP here. That is Ananta, Kojin, and Namazu, uh, with Namazu being for crafters and gatherers. So um, I know I'm skipping all the crafter and gatherer stuff in this video, but Namazu quests are really funny. <laughs> like if you decide to do crafting later, definitely don't miss the Namazu quests. One last thing that I skipped over was the Eureka unlock that you get at level 70. This is a series of four different instanced zones that are involved in the acquisition of the Stormblood relic weapon. And it's also how you get your diable job gear from Stormblood. Although this is fun and I love the Baldessian Arsenal raid, it is definitely side content that you can do after you reach max level. Okay, so Shadowbringers level 70. Now it is the time to start grabbing nutsacks. <laughs> yes, yes. You'll see what I mean when you go and unlock the base hunts for Shadowbringers. Level 72, you can uh, get flying in Lakeland. Level 73, we have Ill Meg flying. Yes, very important. Plus the two nut hunts. <laughs> I'm still hunting for my two nuts. Sure. <laughs> I know up to this point, we have been skipping the Beast Tribe quest, but you do not want to skip Pixies because they give insanely good XP. Definitely worth. Level 75, Raktika Greatwood flying. And level 76, Three nut hunts, unlocked by my favorite quest name in the game. How do you like three nuts? <laughs> level 77, Amarang flying. And level 79, Kalusha flying. Level 80, the Tempest flying. Look, if you know someone that has a multi seater mount, that can just take you to the ether currents, you're gonna have a better time. And a level 80, also elite hunt access. Also here you can unlock Stone Sky C. That is a way to sort of figure out what your DPS is kind of like. Helpful uh, since there is no other way to check. I don't know of any other way to check that. that. I don't know. For Shadowbringers there are two side dungeons that you should absolutely do right away because they are freaking amazing. The Twinning and Academia and Niter. Do not even hesitate to go do those ASAP. There's also the Eden Eight Man Raid series that you can do, and uh, the Near Twenty Four Man Alliance Raid series, the Sorrow of Weirlit Trial series, and the Bajan Southern Front stuff. Which is the Bajan Southern Front stuff is all related to you getting your relic weapon for Shadowbringers. So. Um, yeah, there's a lot here once again, but now that you're max level, you can just freely pick any of this at whatever you want to dive into first. I would suggest maybe start with Sorrow of We're Lit, those trial bosses, uh, because the story is really good. As for stuff I think it's safe to put off on your way to level 80, well, obviously I skipped to the other beast tribes because they're for crafting and gathering, and I put all the crafting and gathering off. Uh, you can do that at max level, of course. Emotes and sightseeing log, I skipped it though. Do you get around to the Great Serpent unlock because it would be Ronka? to skip it. <laughs> Great Serpent is beloved by the community, so that's why I suggest do that. And oh, and get your, uh, get your lolly, huh? You know then I guess you're just gonna be catching up on all the stuff that you put off up to this point. I think you're gonna be very busy for a while. Buns, I hope this video was helpful for you. I decided to not overwhelm you even more with a ton of quest unlock info in this video. I just wanted to direct you to 
this article um, so that you can check the quest requirements there. I didn't want to clutter the screen too much. And I didn't want to like overwhelm you with information. Just wanted to, in the most concise way I could, try to show you which things are important and which things you can actually skip. If you like this video or you found it helpful, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support the channel for free by clicking the subscribe button and by sharing this video with your fellow Warriors of Light. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.